then the polynomials are very useful to approximate functions around a certain point. You have already seen these polynomials for a function of one variable. Is this also possible for functions of more variables? Yes, it is, as you will learn in this video. The expressions do become a bit more lengthy though, as you will see as well. So let's first recap. Fast one, the Taylor expansions for a function of one variable. So suppose f goes from r to r and you have some point x equals x naught. What then was the Taylor polynomial of degree n? Well, what you have to do, compute all the derivatives at x0, divide the nth derivative at x0 divided by n factorial and multiply with x minus x0 to the power n. So if you write down the first few terms, what do you get? The nth Taylor polynomial f of x0 plus f prime at x0 times x minus x0 plus one half times f double at x0 times x minus x0 squared. And then the last term will be the nth derivative at x0 divided by n factorial times x minus x0 to the power n. So let's do a fast example. So suppose we have cosine 2x and x0 equals pi. So let's do the second one. For that we need f at x0, f prime at x0 and f double at x0. Well f at x0 is just cosine 2 pi equals 1. f prime equals minus 2 times the sine of 2x. So at x0, so at pi we get minus 2 times the sine of 2 pi equals 0. f double equals minus 4 times the cosine of 2x. So at pi we get minus 4. So the second order Taylor polynomial for this function would be the 1 plus 0 times x minus pi, the 0, plus minus 4 of 2 times x minus pi squared. So that's for a function of one variable. Now moving on to more variables. So function from r2 to r and some point x0, y0. Now the first Taylor polynomial, t1, we again get it f at x0, y0, and then fx at the point times x minus x0, plus fy at the point times y minus y0. So you already get one more term. That's the first order term polynomial. And if you make a graph of this, this will correspond to the tangent plane to your function. Now the second one, and there we stop because this one already becomes a big mess. The second one is again, the first part is the same, eh? just as you know from single variable Taylor polynomials, and then we get some second order pro terms, the fxx times one half times x minus x naught squared, plus the fyy times one half times y minus y naught squared, and also a mixed derivative term, fxy times x minus x naught times y minus y naught. So that's how you compute these. Let's do an example. So I uh, wrote the uh, uh, formulas uh, again. And then we take f equals x squared times y cubed and some point, and at this point f equals 4. Now we want eventually to compute the second order Taylor polynomial, so we need a lot of partial derivatives. We start with fx equals 2xy cubed, and in the point this equals 4, we compute fy, 3x squared y squared, in the point equals 12, and then we form the first Taylor polynomial, which is just this part over here. So the 4, that's this 4, uh, the, uh, the 4 times x minus 2, this is 12 times x minus 1. So there we have the uh, first order Taylor polynomial. Moving on to the second order. We need fxx equals 2y cubed in the point to 1, that's just 2. fyy equals 6x squared y in the point that equals 24. And we also need the mixed derivative. 6xy and the point is equals 12. So the second order Taylor polynomial equals the first one plus fxx over 2 times x minus 2 squared plus fyy over 2 times y minus 1 squared plus fxy times x minus 2 times y minus 1. So this is how you compute uh, Taylor polynomials for functions of more variables. One important thing to note uh, what sometimes goes wrong is that People forget to substitute the point to 1 so it's, uh, and leave just the fx here and put all kinds of fx's over there. That's a really horrible mistake. 
uh, because then you don't get a, a polynomial necessarily, then it becomes a mess. So do not forget to substitute the point to get those co coefficients. Those coefficients are just numbers.